Today we're bringing to you a very special and an imperatively important episode of Prep Stutters that I want you to pay attention to. And I want you to share this with friends that need to hear this message. This is important. Now, let's get right into this. There's something that was that was made mainstream just a few months ago in November of this past year. So as we tape this, we're only about two months away from when this went public and immediately went viral, if you want to call it that. It is already a $20 billion company. Can you even comprehend that? Within five days, it was as popular as Facebook. Uh, and Facebook took like five years to reach the level of use that, that this is getting. What I'm talking about is chat GPT. If you've heard of that, or if you've heard of AI, which is artificial intelligence, that's what that stands for. Chat GPT is going to change and is already changing the face of everything that we're doing on this earth. It is revolutionary. It is bigger than the invention of the internet or the light bulb or the telephone. And it is already affecting you right where you are today. In fact, in the last several years, if you've Googled something, you will get um, a myriad of answers. And most of those are written by people, which is good but increasingly a number of those answers to your questions are coming from artificial intelligence. And you might be tipped off when you see right in the middle of an article, something doesn't look quite right, but now it is even more intelligent. It even has more resources to deal with, uh, to, to come up with how it's interacting with you and having conversations with you that are changing everything. Let me just talk you through a few things. I'm going to put the links down below this episode so that you can see where to go to play with it some yourself. You can log in and create a free account, but interestingly, they do require that you at least give your phone number. Now, I want you to think about the last few years and every time you needed to text message someone and you just spoke right into your phone, hey, text Tracy and tell her to meet me for coffee at Applebee's at three o'clock on Tuesday. Every one of those texts that you have spoken into your phone has been recorded. Your voice, not just the words, but your voice has been recorded. In fact, you can go back in the history and look and listen to all those text messages that you've recorded or when you wanted to navigate somewhere. It's recording everywhere you go, everything you say, and it can even record you when it's turned off. I want you to just think about that. I want you to think about the free email servers that you use, especially like Gmail and Yahoo and anything like that. They are not free except for in monetary money, but they are entirely expensive because they get to record every single word you've ever typed everything you've re received and everything that has gone out from you through those email servers is being recorded. Now, imagine artificial intelligence being able to pull from all of those emails and everything that you've ever posted, either through a text message or through Facebook and social media on Instagram, how many times your face has been recorded online feed that all into one big system and you have something that looks more and more like a beast to me. Now, I am in chat GPT right at this moment. I'll put the link down below where you can go to it yourself, but it is just chat.openai.com will get you there. You can ask it anything under the sun and instead of like Google where it will pull back 1,437,000 options of uh, websites that you can choose from to go to. No, it just feeds you the answer straight away. And you can say, no, I didn't like that. Tell me it a different way or, but what about this? And it will interact back with you. It remembers what you've said, what you've asked it, what answers it's given. So I've asked it a few things. I've asked it to write wedding vows or write a poem and it does. I have asked it to tell me what a recipe is and it does perfectly 
outlines the recipe with bullet points of every ingredient and every direction I need for that recipe to be complete. It can um, do a myriad of different things. It can write computer code and it gets it correctly. Can you imagine? It can correct bad computer code. So it will automatically put in jeopardy those who write code for a living because it can do it better than humans. It can write songs and there are already copyright issues and a huge tither going on in the song industry because now you can write a song with artificial intelligence that you didn't write at all, <laughs> that you own the copyrights to. You can use that and no one will ever know the difference. It could even write an entire book. You wouldn't need a ghostwriter. You don't need to be talented or even know how to spell right yourself. And it can write it for whatever audience you choose. So you could say, I want this book to be written for a fifth grader or for a PhD Harvard graduate. It, it is incredible in what it is intuitive in its ability to interact with you on. Um, it can write movie scripts or plays with not just characters and plots, but scenarios and backgrounds and backstory and nuance to it. And it spits it out in about three seconds. It can write term papers. And so of course, right now it's a huge problem because as university professors are not even able to tell if that term paper was written by a student or by artificial intelligence, they have no choice but to just grade it as though it was your original work. It also understands you if you spell wrong when you're asking it questions. I said, what are some of the worst case scenarios in using AI in regards to humans? And this is what the answer it gave me was. It says there are several potential worst case scenarios related to the use of AI that could have negative impacts on humans. Some examples include job loss. As AI systems become more advanced, they could potentially automate many tasks that are currently done by humans, leading to widespread job loss and economic disruption. Interestingly, Microsoft is one of the biggest investors in this technology, but just yesterday, how interesting it is that they laid off 5% of their workforce, over 10,000 employees lost their job yesterday at Microsoft. Hmm, what's that about? Number two, bias and discrimination. So I ask it what the scenario was. It has said, if AI systems are trained on biased data, or if the algorithms used to make decisions are biased, then the systems can perpetuate and even amplify existing societal biases. This could lead to discrimination in areas such as hiring and lending and criminal justice, as well as other areas. Number three, privacy and security. Artificial intelligence systems can collect and process large amounts of personal data, which could be vulnerable to hacking or misuse by bad actors. This could lead to breaches of privacy and security. Now this one is the one that makes my blood curdle. Autonomous weapons. Autonomous weapon systems, also known as killer robots, are AI controlled weapon systems that can select and engage targets without human intervention. These weapons could be used in warfare and could lead to the loss of human lives and increased global instability. If you're not speechless yet, I don't know what to say, but here are two more points. Unintended consequences. It says, as AI systems become more advanced and are more used in areas of society, it becomes increasingly difficult to anticipate and prevent unintended consequences. This could lead to unforeseeable negative impacts on society and individuals. And last, dependence. As artificial intelligence systems become more prevalent, humans 
may become too dependent on them, losing even their ability to make decisions and problem solve on their own. I've only spoken to you about the text portion of this, but there is just as sinister a side of this that is for images. It can take, and, and just like your camera already knows, if you've scrolled through the gallery on your camera or your phone, you've noticed how it can recognize all of Aunt Susie's photos. Well, AI obviously can do that. It knows every single time your face has appeared on the on the movie um, on the movie screen on the on the television on the computer screens in social media anywhere that you've gone that has had camera surveillance that is recognizing your face. If you if you have been following the news, you understand that in China right now, there's the social credit system where they have 3D imagery of your face that's already in the system. They recognize who you are and they know where you work, your age, your weight, your social security number and all of your medical history, what you've done wrong and gotten in trouble with the law on before, whether you've paid your taxes, and on and on and on. They have that all recorded. They know every single food item you buy for the week and how much you've exercised and so forth. That technology is not just in China though. In fact, it's over here in America and very prevalent and we don't even realize it. If you read the New York Times um, story just last week, I think it was, they talked about someone being um, told she couldn't enter to see the, the Radio Music City Hall. She wasn't able to go and see the Rockettes perform their Christmas show because the cameras that scanned the crowd recognized her and she actually worked for a company that was in some sort of a lawsuit or such with uh, one of the companies, either the Rockettes or the, or the Music Hall, either one, something like that. And so they didn't even let her in. They can deny her access. My friend just last week needed to get on a cruise sh ship that required her passport. And she didn't have her passport with her, but they said, oh, no worries, ma'am. The cameras have already scanned you and we know exactly who you are and we know your so social security number and you're allowed to come on even without a passport. We know everything about you. I want this to make your blood curdle. Now, this is technology though, that I'll leave you with this. It's already working very quickly toward and could it be accomplished even as quick as this year to be able to take the text that you can generate, the images that are generate, generated even of your own likeness and movement such that it is able to splice these in together and create fictitious but absolutely believable movies that you could even participate in you could you could type in that you wanted to be in a movie that is oh a rom a, a romantic comedy where you fall in love with uh, who knows uh, your actor of choice and you're on a cruise ship and you get to eat sardines or what, whatever it is that you want to have play into the story. You can feed it into this. It instantly spits out the script and the scenarios and the nuances and emotions of it. And it takes your likeness with your voice and action and is able to put you into that scenario and play out those movies, movies right before your own eyes. Now imagine what that can do for deceiving whoever it needs to or wants to deceive. I want your wheels to be turning. If, if I go back in time just a little bit, as a child, we got to watch the Miss Universe pageants every now and then on TV, once in a blue moon. And I remember that they would have a nice panel of judges that was kind of representative of multiple countries. And, and it was this beautiful myriad of, um, different cultures represented as they judge. And as they judge, it often came out that whoever wins somehow had this beautiful um, 
conglomeration of features that were represented among all of those countries that were judging it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they were kind of this right perfect in-between of all of these cultures represented and that's what we universally find to be beautiful and attractive and trustworthy even. Now, imagine if a world leader could be produced through artificial intelligence that has the characteristics that are most universally trustworthy, most universally welcomed and appreciated and revered. How would we know the difference? It sounds like us because it's a conglomeration of all of our voices and, and we find ourselves quickly uh, trusting them whether they are real or not because we cannot tell the difference. And it says in scripture that if it were not uh, for the Lord protecting his elect, elect, all of us would be completely deceived by what's coming. We're living in the end times. It's going to be almost indiscernible. And so you must train yourself on knowing how to identify what is right and real and true and warn your family about even participating in feeding the beast, so to speak, as you use this technology that's so exciting, that's so intriguing, and yet it can easily be manipulated to do a great deal of danger. Thank you for letting me warn you today. I hope you take me very seriously and go out and do your own research for yourself. This is absolutely sinister. It is, it is, something that none of us should take lightly and think, oh, that's just the newest technology. This is already changing the face of the world and will for you, your children, and your grandchildren. Become educated and know what you need to do to protect yourself. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for letting me take the time to share my screen with you and show you just a little bit of this. Thank you for taking the time to do your own research and share this with other friends that need warned. And we'll see you back next time for another episode of Prep Stutters. Until then, will you go out and find one person that needs you to be their blessing? And would you bless them today? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Before you go, I would love to share with you a quick word. This is from the Holy Bible in that book of Psalms from David. And he's writing here about God's words to him. And God is saying, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. That's Psalm 32, verse eight. Now go spread the word.